Hello from Sunstone Engineering. My name is Jason Davis. We're going to give you a quick demonstration on how to set your battery welding tools up today. What you've got here is a few things that you may have in your shop and you're wondering what do I do with these things. If you ever call into the office we're going to refer to this as the power supply. This is your weld head. There are multiple plugs that are plugged in. We'll review those at a different time to tell you how to plug those in and where they should go to make your life easier. When you get your weld head, there's a couple things to be aware of. You've got two micrometers on the front. This allows you to increase the pressure or decrease the pressure for each electrode individually. Also, you'll notice that the electrodes need to be on the same welding plane. One of the easiest ways to do that, raise your weld head just a little bit. Take a block or something that's about a good height. I like about a half inch of an electrode sticking down because I don't want to waste a whole bunch. But I'll loosen up these two screws and let the electrodes drop onto a flat surface. Then I'll go ahead and tighten them. That way I know they're on the same plane. That's important because if these electrodes are not flat, clean, and on the same plane, when you engage them, if it's on an uneven plane, you'll blow out part of a tab. Nobody likes to waste batteries or redo work. So another thing that will come up is when you clean your electrodes, some people like to use a file or a grinder. I'm going to ask you to please not do that. If you can find something similar to this, back your pressure all the way off to zero on both micrometers. That will allow you to have very light pressure. Take your sandpaper, take a very fine grit sandpaper, put it on top of a solid surface, engage your weld head and pull. Engage your weld head and pull. Now I've done it I would prefer you do it this way, pull it forward. That allows you to have a flat surface on your electrodes. That's important because if your electrodes are uneven, again, on a micro scale they may look flat, but on a micro scale they're based the, the Himalayas and you'll get blowout. When I first weld, I'll put my elect, my, both micrometers at about 10. Then I'll come over to my power supply. We've already preset the stop nut if that ever comes up. So you'll see it on most of your welders there's a light here. When I engage it, no light comes on. So I back my stop nut off until I see a light come on. Once I see the light come on, I'm going to tighten this up. That's going to be where I want it to be. Then I'll come over to my power supply. There's two things you can do here. You can use pulse one and pulse two or you can only use weld energy. The way, I want, the way I prefer to do it is I take pulse one, I turn it off. I take pulse two, I turn it all the way on. Now I'm only dealing with the weld energy knob. If I'm using a weld head, I've got a one gauge cable, I should be setting my welder for a nickel can at about 120 watt seconds to make my welds. Now, just because I've said that, your numbers are going to be different than my numbers. So what I want you to do is I want you to set your welder at 40. And I want you to make your first weld at 40 or 30. Make sure that you don't blow holes in things. Because just because I give you a number doesn't mean it's perfect for every can and every tab in the world. So you'll set it at a low number. Make a weld. Did it weld? Probably not. Now take it, raise it to 60. Make a weld. Did it weld? Maybe a little bit. Now if you have a lithium ion, I want you to be careful in this area because the lithiums require about half as much power as a regular battery. So for a lithium, you're probably going to end up at about 80. But for a regular battery, a steel or nickel cadmium, you're going to raise it, you probably end up at about 120 with a 1 gauge cable. Now if you happen to be using hand probes, these can be handy for strange angles or for hard to reach places. These you would use a different way. You have a foot pedal that came with your welder. You'll disconnect the weld head from the back of your welder. You'll plug in this foot pedal. When you go to make a weld, you'll take these in each hand. You'll apply moderate pressure and you'll tap your foot pedal. You get two welds. This is less likely to pop. so. If you have people that are just beginning to train, this is an excellent way to get them started. You'll notice I've got both hooked up at the same time. That's acceptable 
as long as you're not sitting your welder like this while you're hitting your pedal for the weld head. But hopefully we all understand that. Just something else to show you real quick. If you need another tool, this is a new little handheld weld piece, weld, handheld weld head that we've got. This runs a thousand bucks. As a side note, your probes are $150. Your weld head, including the base plate, should be $3,250. And whichever power supply you end up can be generally about $4,700. The pressure on your weld head should be about 30. You can see I've got a compressor down here, very quiet. You haven't heard it go off. And there's some various other plugs. This is a, just a basic overview. You're welcome to call us with any other setup questions. We'll be happy to help you. As you get your system, call us. Let us help you right away. Again, it's Sunstone Engineering. Hope this has helped you. Thanks, guys.